All right, so I am making this video because I have just been so unmotivated to do anything and I really need to get this particular job done. So I'm turning on the camera to hold me accountable and to keep me off of my phone because I just keep looking at dumb stuff, like literally the dumbest stuff. I've been super distracted because we just told the kids that we're going to Disney for the first time this summer and I've been just watching everything about Disney that there is to watch. If you have any Disney World tips, let me know down in the comments below. We, I think, are just going to go to uh, Magic Kingdom and Epcot, so we've been watching a ton of videos about that, and then I'll show you my other thing that's been taking up my life, but then I will take you with me to the task at hand, and this entire video is going to kind of show you what it's like to consign for a pop-up consignment event. I know there are some for kids. This one that I'm going to try out happens to be for adult women. Um, I don't think they allow any kids stuff or any men's stuff, so I'm in the midst of tagging stuff and just making sure that I have all my ducks in a row. This event, or like the drop off for this event of all of my pieces, I keep, I keep trying to put my elbow down on the table and missing the table, that's why I keep doing one of these. Anyway, the drop off is tomorrow between one and five, that's why I gotta get it done today. And I have a video to edit and I need to list because I haven't been listing. I just am not motivated. So please help me stay motivated, let's go. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck All they really want Here's one of the culprits as to why I am not motivated Or my little planties! Hi planties! How you doing? How you doing? These are like tomatoes and peppers that I started indoors and I'm letting them hang out outside for a little bit to experience actual sunshine and all that kind of stuff. Um, these are just some lettuce. There's like carrots in there that are slowly starting to grow. Lots of fun stuff, some bok choy. I think there's some spinach in there. Um, so this is what I'm going to do with my life and why I have just not been super motivated. All right, this is what's going on in here. Uh, these are my kids abandoned gnome painting <laughs> adventures, but this is where I've set up shop. Uh, pop chips are my sustenance. This is my son's milk. We need to put that away. Um, these racks are the things that have been tagged already. And I do have pants down there on the floor that have also been tagged. I need to get through this box and then I have one more box about this size that I need to get through as well. These are my supplies. So here you will see the little, um, what is this called, tags. I, I don't know why I couldn't remember that word. Um, these are the little tags. This is the tag gun that I bought from them. They just kind of ship it to you, which is nice. Um, yeah, so this is what we're working with. Let me show you the ropes. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of talk to you while I work here. Um, but essentially, the things that I am tagging and selling at this sale are things that I just don't want to list myself. They're things that I got in some thread up mystery boxes. They're stuff that I got in my recent wholesale palette. Things that like are fine, just, you know, I'm not excited about them. I know I'm not going to make much profit off of them. So like this, for example, is a brand called LA Gypsy. I don't know what that is. I don't, yeah, I think I'll make like a handful of dollars off of this if I sell it. And so I'm just going to you know, tag it and try to make some of my money back at this pop-up consignment sale. And I love shopping at this pop-up consignment sale. It is one of my sourcing highlights of the year. Actually, this particular sale pops up twice a year. And so I try to go both times. I always get some really, really great pieces. Um, so I'm excited to shop it and excited to kind of offset some of my sourcing costs by selling at this event as well. So it's really nice because one thing that you can do is tell them if you want your pieces back, if it doesn't sell, or you can donate it. So for the majority of these pieces, I am opting to just have them donate it to a local charity and one that I love, one that I go to often and support because it is one that works very closely with members in our community who are in need and you know provides jobs and stuff. I think it's a lot better than like Goodwill. Um, and so I like that 
I can try my very best to get these pieces to sell. And if they don't, then they'll go ahead and donate the items for me. But there's a handful of pieces that like, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, I can make like $10, $15 off that item. So I'll just go ahead and get it back. Um, but for the most part, most of these items I am listing really low, like $5 or less. And I make 60% off of that. Um, so I'm listing them for like five or six dollars. I am saying that they can go half off for the last couple days of the sale. And if they still don't sell, I am giving them permission to donate them on my behalf. And so it's kind of nice. I mean, the way that this works, this is a filled out tag. You can see all the information on there. I kind of treat it like a regular, you know, reselling platform listing where I put like the title name first, the color, what it is. Um, Sometimes I put even more detail, but it's really not necessary. This, I don't know why it took me so long to figure out how to get these stupid little taggy things in, but then I figured it out because I watched a YouTube video on how to do it. But you literally just like punch it into one of these and then I like to stick it through the label and you've got the little tag on there and it looks so nice and professional. Um, they do not allow you to hang your stuff on wire hangers. So I did have to go to Target and buy, you know, sets of these like white plastic hangers. I think it was like, let's see. I think it's like 20 of them for $3 or something like that. So yes, that is a cost, although I will get some of those back. And then I think they charge $10 for you to consign through them for an event. And then finally, if you don't have enough pant hangers, which clearly I don't like how many people actually have enough pant hangers and those are expensive to buy at the store. You can rent pant hangers from them for $5. So I am going into this with, let's see, $10 for my, um, what is it called? Like $10 for my consignment fee. Um, five dollars to rent hangers and then however much i spent on these hangers which we'll see i i bought a bunch and i don't know how many pieces i'm actually going to be consigning i will do a final tally for you when i'm done here's an example of another piece that i am going to um try and list oh there's like a a little tag stuck okay it's the brand dahlia dahlia i you know, I've sold it before. I don't have a lot of luck selling it. It's like a perfectly nice dress, but one that I feel like will sit and sit and sit in my Poshmark closet and eBay store. So I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, tag it and see if anyone else local to me in this area also attending this event wants it. So I'm just saying Dahlia Blue. Was, was it an A-line dress? Yeah, it's like an A-line dress a line dress you put the size you put how much you want to charge for i'm going to charge eight but i will let it go half off and i am okay with them donating it if it doesn't sell um, and i kind of have like a decent idea of how to price sometimes it doesn't go through which is annoying and then i just do it again but in that event i have wasted one of those little plastic tags but um I have a decent idea of how to price things because, hold on, let me get a hanger. Because I've shopped at this event now probably, I don't know, like five or six times. And so um, I kind of have an idea, I kind of have an idea of how things are priced and um, what kind of stuff tends to stick around. Like when I'm flipping through the racks being like, oh man, like this person <laughs> charged way too much. And I know what kind of stuff is there when I go for half off day. Um, so I am really in the business of trying to move this stuff. I do not want any of it left over. I would obviously prefer to sell it than have it go to the local thrift store. So I, yeah, I am pricing to sell because these are just not pieces that I want to come home with me. So this like white, I think it's like a golf polo, but like just so much polyester and I don't know, the brand is Sport Haley. I'm charging $4 for this. <laughs> and if they want it for half off, they can get it for half off. I'm gonna be doing this for probably another hour or so. I'm hoping that I make a decent amount of money selling these pieces. We shall see what happens. Like this right here, it's a cute piece, but 
it's just like a little boutique brand named Joy. I, yeah, I just don't think I'd be able to get very much for it. There's no size on it, so I have to guess the size. Oh no, there is, it says medium on the tag. But like this one, for example, like it's off the shoulder, like I'll probably ask for this one back because I can see it selling probably for like $10, $15 on Poshmark and you know, yeah, I'll, I'll get it back. A lot of people from the sale are not willing to donate it, but you'll see the same pieces back like sale after sale because they'll just keep sending it back. They'll just keep the tag on when they get their pieces returned to them and they just see if someone will buy it the next time around. So it's like I could do that, but I don't want these things back in my home. I have a lot of stuff in my home I don't need anymore. So um, I'm okay with maybe getting back a few things that I would just list myself online. Otherwise, they're just gonna go to the thrift store. I'm done with them and that's okay. Also, if you can hear stuff in the background, that is because my son is watching a show. So <laughs> you're hearing part that, part me working. How much should I charge for this? I'm thinking $6, <laughs> okay. I'm thinking $6, right? And then half off on half off day if it doesn't sell i'll sell it myself like i feel like it's okay it's like a decently it's a decent like cute piece but i don't know also i i don't know what's wrong with my eye like my my eye is still messed up if you've been watching my last couple videos you've heard me complaining about my eye. It's not pink eye. I don't have any discharge, but it's almost like the eyeball itself feels swollen. Like I think it's just infected. And this bright light, to be honest with you, is not helping. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, what are you? Oh, okay. So this is a Lane Bryant piece. Lane Bryant is actually like a decent bread and butter brand. I just have a horrible time selling it. And this piece has a little hole type thing in the back. So for those reasons, I yeah, we're gonna try list. We're gonna try selling it at this thing. I also have horrible penmanship, <laughs> so I'm like worried that they're not gonna be able to read my numbers, like my prices or even my consigner number. Um, yeah, but trying to not suck at this. Five dollars. So I wanted to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, which is Skillshare. As you guys know, I have partnered with them to share with you just how amazing it is to have a resource like Skillshare where you can learn about a ton of different topics in the pockets of time that you have. And so, you know, while I was preparing all of my items for this consignment sale, I had a lot of time and I was just sitting there like writing in, you know, descriptions on these little tags and writing in prices and circling little things or just moving clothes from one place to another and one of the things I like to do is you know make use of that time learn in the background while I'm doing something that's kind of like monotonous and doesn't require a lot of my brain and it was something that I had to kind of get myself like pumped up to do do. I wasn't necessarily super excited about preparing all of these items for the sale. And so one of the classes that I actually took on Skillshare was Lifestyle Pacing. This was by Raylan Agle, and it was Tools for Optimizing Energy and Achieving Your Goals. This is definitely something that I needed in terms of seeing this goal through. You know, I had this goal of taking all of these items to this consignment sale, and I just was lacking motivation. And so listening to this class, like while I was you know, mustering up the energy and the determination to do it was really helpful because it helped clarify in the moment as I was doing the thing, why I was doing it, how to kind of keep myself motivated. And it was really great for that purpose. I think just kind of like hearing these things that I already knew to be true, like I already know how to do some of these things, but hearing them explained differently with different examples and just in that moment when I needed to hear it the most, it was really helpful. And that's one of the things I like about Skillshare. Sometimes it's great for learning a new skill. You know, I have watched it to learn how to make specific kinds of garden beds for my garden or how to cook a specific recipe, but it's also great 
to serve as a reminder to help you get motivated for the things that you're doing at that moment, or just to hear a different take on something that you may feel like you already know a lot about. So if you are interested in Skillshare, which like I said, is an online community of a ton of different classes on different kinds of topics, like literally, I think there's a class on anything you can think of on Skillshare, and they're all made available to you for a monthly fee. And there are new classes being added every single week. So if that sounds interesting to you, the first thousand people to click on the link down in the description below will actually get to try out Skillshare for free for one month. So definitely click that link, check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, like I said, I've been growing a lot, learning a lot because of it. And I think it's a really great tool. everything in my car everything is tagged um, that box in the back right there that's all bottoms so I think there are 60 like pants skirts bathing suit tops that sort of thing there's one pair of shoes and the rest are tops dresses that sort of thing I believe I have a total of 252 items that I'm taking I kind of thought it'd be a little bit more, but also like that's a lot. So, you know, the goal is to see if like even half of this stuff will sell. But as you can see, everything is on hangers. Everything is tagged. Um, we'll see what happens. So the next update will be just kind of showing you what it's like to take all this stuff there. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and close this door and get ready for the storm. have passed since the sale. You know, you saw me prepping for it, you saw me like hanging up pants and stuff, and you also saw maybe the haul where I actually went shopping at the sale. So the real question is how much money did I actually make? Um, I forget how many pieces I brought. I think it was close to 300-ish. And what they did was they mailed me a check. It's very old school. They mailed me a check as well as this sales receipt. I'm trying to cover up my address, but it's the sales receipt with literally every single item that sold, which doesn't really mean anything to me because it's not like they have the description as I wrote it. Um, I don't, I don't know what each of these items are necessarily, but it shows me the transaction number, which means nothing, the sale price. So how much I had it priced at and if it sold at half off or not. So just kind of flipping through this, first of all, there were a handful of things that sold you know, full price. They didn't go half off and yet someone bought them in those first couple days of the sale. Um, but I would say definitely just at a quick glance, it seems like two thirds of the items I would say did sell half off, which I was prepared for. I was totally fine with. Um, and it was pretty cool because, you know, a lot of the $6, $8, $5 items sold, but I also had like $15 items sell and not even half off. Like they just sold for $15 on that first day. I had things sell for $10. I think 15 is like the highest one. And I think $15 is the most that I priced anything at. Oh, okay. And it shows you if something sold for half off, it shows you the half off price versus you having to sit there and do the math. So it looks like half off, there were things that sold at the lowest for $2 and 50 cents. And at the highest, it looks like maybe like $6. <laughs> so just even that should kind of go to show you that I was not, you know, charging a ton for these things. And when I'm making 60% of how much an item sold for, I'm not going to be walking away with much. So let me count how many items sold. All right. I sold 66 items at the sale. That is less than half. Um, so a lot of the items went to get donated, which I was totally fine with. And I also got a good number of pieces um, that they saved for me to bring back home because I had marked on the tag that, you know, there were probably, I want to say like 10 to 20 pieces that I didn't want them to donate. I wanted to go pick them up. And so I did. So I would say I, you know, was able to sell 66. I probably have about 15 or 20 that came back home with me. So that leaves over a hundred that got donated, which honestly is fine because, you know, those items were not going to be worth my time. And in terms of photographing, listing, shipping out, that sort of thing. So from those 66 items, I got a check in the mail for $179.66 cents. That's not a lot. That comes out to like what? I don't have a calculator. I do have a calculator in front of me. Let's see how much 
that comes out to per item. And that does include my $10 registration fee. That's how much they charge each person to um, consign at this thing. Um, so if I divide the amount that I earned by 66, that means I made $2.72 <laughs> per item because again, I was only earning 60%. Not a lot. Here's what I'll say. It is comparable to about what I would make out of Plato's Closet, except for the fact that Plato's Closet wouldn't accept probably about 95% of the items that I took to this consignment sale. Um, it was a lot of work in terms of like sitting there and writing out the tag and stuff. Still less work, I would say, than, you know, listing these items online. Would I do it again? Maybe, with the stipulation of, I think what I learned from looking at, you know, my pricing and what things sold, I think I could actually get away with pricing things a little bit higher. I think it's hard for me to separate out how I feel about an item versus its actual value. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's easier to do when I'm listing stuff online, but because I'm already at my wit's end with the piece, you know, when it's gotten to the stage of like, I'm going to consign it and let it get donated after, I just want to price it super low so that I at least have the chance of it selling before it gets donated. And I feel like the best way to increase my chances of that is by just selling it for dirt cheap. But I don't know, maybe I can, you know, price things a little bit higher. I also could do different things and like help out at the sale that will increase the amount that I take home. So like if you help out, I think you get to take home 70% of your earnings versus 60. Um, and helping out isn't awful in that if you help set up, for example, you can see what kinds of items are there and you have an idea of like, where you need to run to if you're one of the first people at the sale. So I don't know. It was an interesting experience. I think it's like worth doing for just those like last ditch pieces that I have no desire to list. Like if I could even make a handful of dollars off those pieces, why not? It wasn't like a horrible experience. So that's it. That was my experience with this pop-up consignment sale, being on the other side of it as a consigner versus a, um, you know, just someone who goes in there and buys stuff, which, you know, like I said, I love shopping at this thing. Um, but let me know. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever tried anything like this before, if seeing this makes you want to try something like this, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!